Well, here's a good one. I think you'll be quite entertained <laughs> by this one. Should Prince Andrew atone for his sins? Um, well, Andrew's clearly been having an awful time recently, and uh, January of 2022 has been worse than most. He's lost his fight to stop the damages suit from Virginia Jufri. He's had his military ranks, and nearly all of them, <laughs> uh, removed by the Queen, as well as uh, some of his patronages. He's been told he can no longer use his HRH title officially on his stationery. I mean, how humiliating is this? Uh, so, uh, should he make an effort to restore his image and position in the eyes of his family and the public by making some form of uh, public apology and act of atonement? Or uh, should he stand fast in the spirit of the royal dictum, never apologize, never explain? I look at both possibilities. First of all, those who say, yes, he should. Um, he should take note of what his many times great-grandfather Henry II did to atone for his uh, complicity in the murder of Archbishop of Canterbury Thomas Becket. It had become clear that uh, Henry had to take some dramatic and visible steps because his royal position was actually threatened by hostile forces that were massed at Calais to dethrone him, probably at the instigation of the Pope. Um, his famous act of atonement included walking up the Canterbury High Street in his bare feet, which, by the way, here in Canterbury, we reenact every year, uh, coming into the cathedral on his knees and being scourged by the monks. It, it worked well. He got away with it. He escaped further damage and pulled off an image restoration miracle. Andrew could do something of the same sort, perhaps without the whipping. Um, and in the right circumstances, with the right sort of project design, it just might work. Also, his behavior, let's face it, has been odious and hateful for many years in the eyes of the vast majority of the people of this country, and, and for that matter, much of the staff of Buckingham Palace. So it's thus morally appropriate that this is formally acknowledged and, and by him. Uh, his reputation is so completely damaged and compromised that he has little to lose. Uh, despite his towering ego and sense of entitle entitlement, he must be in a state of dire depression and humiliation, and thus have a lot to gain, really, by making an effort to recover his reputation. Even though, particularly for a narcissistic individual like Andrew, to do so would be unpleasant and difficult, but it would make sense. Okay, uh, what about the, those that say, no, he should not, no acts of atonement or, or contrition? Well, however much difficulty and damage to his reputation has taken place, this is nothing new in the long history of royal scandals. Uh, observers may say that the current state of affairs is potentially terminal for the monarchy if they don't somehow fix this and, and that nothing this awful has happened in modern times. Well, that's just not true. Uh, there have been plenty of these and the institution has survived just fine, thank you very much. And they've kept the money, probably the most important consideration. So, uh, not a problem there. Uh, further, um, such a step would be unacceptably demeaning and disrespectful for a member of the royal family and thus unpalatable for the nation. We can't have this kind of thing going on with the uh, royals, with the queen and her, uh, with her children and the, and the uh, whole institution at Buckingham Palace. Just can't put up with something like this. And we should also note that he has not been convicted of any crime, uh, nor has, has he been found to be liable for the damages expected in the current lawsuit. That, of course, uh, could, could change. But at present, um, he is innocent until proven guilty. Well, those are some pretty uh, good arguments for telling him to forget about it, to soldier on. And in the context of all of that, what's my take on all of this? Well, to me, Andrew's in a very deep hole. It, it would take quite a dramatic initiative in his part to dig himself out, much as Henry did. But I think it would be wise and, and it must be worth it because the alternative for him is to live the rest of his life in rejection and ignominy. 
Therefore, if I were he, I would begin with a public statement of apology to the nation, without any of the hedges or fudges of the sort that emerge in the famous BBC interview. I would then give up the title of Duke of York, which apparently the MP from York wants him to do, uh, as well as his rank of Vice Admiral in the Navy. I'm sure the Navy would be pleased with that as well. I would arrange for a life of relative austerity, uh, moving to a small section of the Royal Lodge of, say, three or four rooms, and I would dismiss the servants. Uh, he could easily cook for himself and make his own bed. Um, he could pay back the money which the Queen has stumped up for his legal bills uh, to the point where he uses all of his savings. And he could live quite adequately on his uh, Navy pension. What is it, about 30,000 pounds a year? It's not bad. And he could drive a modest Honda SUV like I do. <laughs> that might just do it. Hmm, but I sincerely doubt that he will accept my advice. Well. In any case, there it is. That's what I think. Uh, I hope some of you agree with what I've suggested. If you did, please give me a like, subscribe, comment, notify, and all that sort of thing. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.